Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark, and in this channel, I cover a bit of lifestyle, personal finance, and investments. Now, in the past few weeks, I've been talking about REITs or real estate investment trusts, so that got me thinking, why not just talk about real estate investments altogether? Well, to be perfectly honest, I'm not a real estate professional, nor am I a broker. But what I do have extensive experience in would be managing properties for short-term stays or Airbnbs. Now, in the past few years, I've been fortunate enough to manage a handful of properties owned by friends and family, and this one is actually owned by myself, well, still paying off the bank with my mortgage. So I think out of everything that I've ever talked about, this is probably my area of expertise. If you're new to this channel, one of my first videos that I actually came out with was how I escaped my 9-to-5 job by putting up an Airbnb in Palawan. And I mentioned also in that video that the Airbnb Palawan was actually the culmination of my many Airbnbs here in Manila. So before you buy a condominium as a business investment and using it for short-term use such as Airbnb, watch this video because I'm assessing here which are those condominium developers who are accepting of Airbnb and which are those that really do not allow it. So among the many condominium developers in the Philippines, which of them are accepting of Airbnb? I've put together here a rating of 1 to 10. With a rating of 1, it means that chances are very slim that you're going to be able to use the unit for Airbnb. And with the rating of 10, it means that you can use the property as an Airbnb freely. So how am I rating this? A lot of it is actually based on my personal experience. And a lot of it is on research inputs that I've gotten for friends, family, and acquaintances. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be rating the most popular condominium developers. So starting off with rating 1, I have here Ayala Land Premier, Ayala Land Alveo, and Rockwell Land. Because these condominium developers have gone out of their way to really build their brand and exclusivity, you have a very slim chance of using your condominium unit for short-term tenants or as an Airbnb. But it's not completely impossible. I've seen a few listings on Airbnb that are actually from these premier properties. It can be done, but most likely it's gonna be very strict and it's probably not worth the trouble. Okay, so let's skip two and three. So let's jump to rating four. You're still unlikely gonna be able to use it as an Airbnb, but you have a higher chance. So the first of them would be Avida from Ayala Land as well. From my understanding, all Ayala Land properties are not really for Airbnb use, but for some reason, I do come across Avida every now and then in Airbnb. And the other developer with a rating of four would be Robinson's Land. Now for Robinson's Land, I do have a personal experience here where I was managing a Robinson's Land condominium as an Airbnb. So I think what Robinson's Land is trying to do is they're trying to better their branding. They're trying to match the exclusivity of Ayala Land. Again, they're usually not allowing it, but I was able to successfully do this for about a year because basically in that building, there were already many unit owners who were doing it. So that's one case where even if Robinson's Land doesn't really allow it, many unit owners really had a good say. With okay, moving on to the rating of five, meaning that here you're pretty much 50-50. So with the rating of five, I would have here Federal Land. Federal Land is under the George T. Group. Yes, they're a little higher end as well. But my experience here would be they're quite accommodating actually of Airbnb. It was just unfortunate that the pandemic rolled in. I was just starting to manage a condominium unit under federal land. And even if they had quite a number of restrictions, they were quite accommodating. They were nice to deal with. So I'm giving them a rating of 5. Definitely higher than Robinson's land. Okay, moving on to the rating of 6. Meaning that you're more likely going to be able to use it as an Airbnb, but still not completely convincing enough, I guess. So with a rating of 6, I have here SMDC, so our SM Development Corporation. Actually, because of the sheer volume of SMDC properties, I think SMDC has the most number of listings on Airbnb. Um, don't quote me on that, that's just a rough estimate. But I'm giving them a 6 because my experience in hosting in SMDC is that it's a bit difficult. There are a number of requirements and it was just not as smooth flowing as it has been when comparing to other experiences that I've had. For SMDC, they actually charge your guests an extra fee for using the pool or the gym and other facilities. Of course, these are all pre-pandemic. They are also quick to charge any violations that your guests may incur. So if your guests happen to leave their clothes hanging on the balcony or the window, so 
you're likely to get a memo right away. They found a way to really make money off this initiative as well. <laughs> Alright, so between the rating of 6 and 7, this one I actually see a lot but I'm giving this a rating of 6 to 7 because personally I don't have experience in hosting a unit in these developments and this development would be DMCI and just unfortunate that I never got around to hosting a property that is owned by DMCI so let me know if you agree with me is it easy to host in DMCI properties? So moving on to the rating of 7, meaning that you are even more likely to be allowed to use the unit as an Airbnb and hosting will be a fairly easy process. Rating number 7, I have Vistaland Group. So I have had a few experiences in hosting in Vistaland properties and I would say that they are quite accommodating and I encountered very little problems when I was hosting in any of their properties. And lastly, also with a rating of 7, would be Mega World Properties. Now definitely Mega World has a lot of properties across the Philippines and in my years as an Airbnb host, Mega World would be the number one source of Airbnb units for myself. Meaning that if I knew friends or family who had Mega World units, I would actually be talking to them and trying to convince them if I can use the unit as an Airbnb. So you might be wondering, is that it? Why is it only 7 out of 10? Well my experience is that even if it's under the same development group, some building admins don't have the same policies and some are a little bit stricter, some just have added rules, some peculiarities that could be annoying. So I'm sharing these with you with that disclaimer that this rating is no guarantee, that there are still chances that even if I give it a rating of 7, that the unit may not be use as an Airbnb, especially now with the pandemic, there are more rules. Of course, the building admin has the primary duty to protect its primary tenants, so that's really understandable. But for you as a prospective buyer and investor in these condominiums, you might be able to use these three things for you to check, do you want to invest in a property solely for the use of Airbnb? So wait, before we end, I'm actually giving a rating of A. It's actually the developer of this building. So this is my own condo unit where I started hosting short-term guests. So the developer of this condominium unit is New San Jose Builders. Now I didn't include it in my ratings earlier because those are rated are actually those that are really big developers with New San Jose Builders. They have a few projects in Quezon City and Manila and one in Makati and also this sole project in BGC. They have been accommodating of using the condo unit as an Airbnb I see a lot also doing that here. And despite the challenges of the pandemic, they've been accommodating, but with good measures, they keep updating their rules. If Metro Manila goes on a stricter lockdown, they also update the policies of the building and put on stricter requirements for any guests coming in. They're not perfect. There are still problems here and there, but generally it's been fairly easy to host in this property. And for those reasons, I'm giving new San Jose builders a rating of eight. Alright, so that's about it. Those are my ratings for the top developers in the Philippines. What do you think? Do you agree with me? I'm sure the responses would greatly vary. I had to stop a lot of my Airbnb operations when the pandemic rolled in, but now that it's starting to open up, hopefully I can start expanding again. So if you have a unit yourself or know of anyone, let me know because I'd be happy to partner up. See if we can go into business together. Now, did you want me to take you on a tour in this condominium unit? <laughs> But maybe let's reserve that for next time. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again and happy investing. This video is made in loving memory of my late brother-in-law, Jojo Pinga. So Jojo was my Airbnb business partner throughout these years. And I hope, Kuya, you're looking out for us up there as we try to restart this business. Thank you for everything.